Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we shall be going over my review, first impressions, whatever this format is, of Loki Episode 5, Into Mystery. And, uh, yeah. Where to begin? Where to begin? Where to begin? Well, we get, uh, pick up right where we left off with Loki. Did we? I'm so forgetful. Either way, this is how I'm removing it. Pick up right where we left off with Loki and the variant Lokis, which are referred to as Kid Loki, I think Alligator Loki, or Crocodile, I can never tell them apart. Uh, do, do, do Classic Loki, but in actuality it's probably just like Old Man Loki, because we'll get into that later. And, uh... <sighs> Hammer Loki or Proud Loki, but not much goes on with him, to be honest. And we'll also get into that. Anyhow, we're quickly thrown into the action and shown Leviathus? This big smoke entity that at times has a head in the shape of a dragon that just consumes everything in this environment, which is referred to as the Void. And it was very close last week. Uh, when saying it was outside of time, turns out it's just the end of time. Where nothing can really make much of a difference. Anywho, they have to run from that, otherwise it will consume and destroy everything else in its path, including a little group of Lokis. And, you know, we get a little stabbing shot with like our Loki just wondering what's going on and... Uh, establishing the other Lokis have been there for a while and have just kind of like accepted this is reality here now and there's not much they can do about it. Even like um, Kid Loki apparently being in charge of the group because in his timeline he killed Thor. And, you know, given he's a kid, you know, it's like how much of a difference is that? But still. Now where was I? And we find out the information about the other Lokis, primarily being that uh, Hammer Loki defeated uh, Captain America and Iron Man and just basically won the day throughout his entire run, getting his hands on the Infinity Stones and just being, you know, completely successful. That does beg the question how the TVA were able to apprehend him going into his timeline, like... They never establish that. Like, they're able to deal with our Loki, the one we fall on the show so easy when they first come out, because he literally just crashed into wherever he is and, you know, was separated from his uh, time stone. Or not time stone, uh, space stone. But if he had held on to that and treated it a bit more like a threat, he probably would have gotten away and been a bit more of a hassle. So someone with the full Infinity Gauntlet, I don't know how... They'd handle that, but mm, no, we don't really need to worry about that. It's just a backstory for this character who doesn't really go anywhere. Getting that briefly. Main one I'm really interested in is old Loki, who was in the classic outfit, because I guess he's just old and gives zero Fs now. Like, uh, I think it's Richard E. Grant is the actor's name. He's having the time of his life being old Loki in this outfit. Just uh, going ham with the magic. I loved it all the way throughout. Anywho, his backstory is, you know that uh, theory everybody had about Loki using an uh, illusion to fool Thanos into faking his death? That's his backstory. But instead of like popping in later, he's basically like, all I ever do is hurt those around me. I'm bad. I just kind of want to move myself from the equation. So after faking, faking his death to Thanos, he just kind of drifts on, gets separated from Thor as kind of like debris and just goes to some random planet and like just parks his uh, keister there for like millennia before he gets really lonely and uh, wants to reach out to Thor, you know, and reestablish that connection. But that would violate the sacred timeline, which him just bumming out on the other planet actually didn't he? In the grand thing, uh, grand scheme of things, him surviving is not an issue. It's just when he starts to try and affect things, which is immediately when the TVA swooped in on the Stoopy, was 
really gone all in on his magic. So like, again, how did they get them? They never really explained that, like advanced technology, sure, what all, whatever. But it's like, you kind of have to establish how you have done this thing. Anywho, or certainly somewhere else, go back to Sylvie. She's just interrogating the judge, pumping for information. Uh, Miss Minutes, they're trying to get, get the information. And then they start going on about like, Oh, this void ship, it can get you there, Miss Minutes. Like, pull up the information, but it's all just a, a gimmick stall for time. Get the other guys in there to fight them. But all of this just established that Sylvie has managed to acquire, you know, um, time stamp, time comp, whatever the time devices are called. And she realizes, like, um, to get to the, uh, timekeepers or whoever is in charge this she has to find out what they are most likely it's beyond what's uh, the void which the tva can't really track past either because it's somehow limited to them or it's been artificially limited by the people who designed that place either way she realizes she has to go there and also there's a chance that loki the one we've been following throughout the show is still alive so she uh, prunes herself to get there. Around this time, uh, Hammer, proud Loki, turns out he betrayed the rest of the group to this uh, other Loki that looks exactly like Tom Hiddleston. Because like we had had that at some point in the show, but um, you know, dressed as the mayor, you know the, that outfit, and it turns out it's just a comedy of errors of everyone betraying everybody. And uh, Mayor Loki getting his hand bit off by Alligator Loki, which is like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, if it was just like bitten off, fine. But like, they want to make this as like PG-13 as possible. So like, you'd see some, but there's not a lot of bleeding or the grip. And the hand is like fully within the mouth. Sorry, just up to here. Like, that's not how alligators work. They tend to like... Fruit force the, the prey to death with powerful bites and then like drowning them. If it's an above water thing or just like crushing them repeatedly. It's not even like a shark. It's they don't cut pieces off. They just just crush with a powerful bite. Anywho. Enough of that. Oh, there's also a lovely little tidbit of like Thor being apparently being trapped in the little glass bottle, trapped in the ground, buried under the dirt, stuck forever. Apparently, that's super messed up. But I appreciate it. It's like a background thing. We only see it because like the entrance into the little underground hidey hole transition shot down there. Oh, I also gotta say, this entire episode is incredibly beautiful. Like every shot is just amazing. The, like, a complaint was other MCU properties looked rather flat. You know, one shot that item uh, dynamically. But this one is a beauty to behold. All the way throughout. Especially in this episode. Dare I say, this episode is what uh, tipped the scales to me for loving this one more than WandaVision. At first, because, like, I was iffy on the TVA. Worried, like, oh no, will they treat them as the good guys all the way throughout? Despite the problematic nature. Like, this has really won me over. Anywho. Comedy of errors. Hand bitten off. Uh, old Loki creates some illusions so the rest of the group can just kind of, like, get away. Meanwhile, Sylvie, waking up, runs from, like, Leviathan or whatever it's called. And it uh, turns out she can make contact with it and enchant it, which will be the climax for this episode. But she needs to get away ASAP, and guess who's here? I called it Morbius in a pizza truck. Which I, I kind of like as a little... I don't know if it's like a reference to uh, Pixar and, you know, the pizza van that's always appearing in every property. But anywho. Anywho. I almost dropped my phone there and maybe broke the uh, charging wire. Not a fan of that. Focusing on 
They both had the same idea for different reasons. Loki wants to kill the Leviathan and has the others take him to it, while Sylvie wants to enchant it, which is the path they ultimately go. Either would have worked, I suppose. Still. They head there and meet up. They have a lovely heartwarming little scene, not only between Loki and Sylvie, but Morbius and the other Lokis, all of which I really appreciated, especially with like after the whole comedy of errors betrayal, uh, classic Loki just calls out like, ah, they always making the same mistakes and getting the same burn the same way every time seeing ad nauseum because Loki's just survived the best within the void, it turns out. And uh, young Loki calls out, and if any of us ever try and prove ourselves to fix ourselves, or successful, but like, well, no, he doesn't say that part. I'm just like inferring it because it's the same effect. But like, if we ever try to get any better, we get pruned by the TVA, which works within the universe, but also has a meta narrative for like, you know, there's been a history of villains, you know, getting redemption arcs and people really liking them, but the higher ups in charge being like, eh. We're gonna keep them as like a villain because that's just what we know what to do like i know we'll betray this like emotional character arc that people really like and highly invested in but we just aren't dedicated to keeping them as a hero or an anti-hero or whatever we just know what we're doing so we're gonna put them back into this little box just because like it's what we know how to do so really having loki fight against the dva here it's just good on an in-universe, but also on a meta level, which I very much appreciate. Anywho, anywho, they meet up. Loki, uh, Kid Loki gives um, our Loki his sword. I can't remember what's called, Chutse or something, which is uh, from the comics. People have wanted to see Loki have it for quite some time, and I think this is a pretty good way to get in his hands sword that just kind of like lights up can break um what's it uh mind control from people and also cut through lies to the truth <laughs> like that's that kind of old school comic book nonsense i'm here for anywho i keep saying that it's just my like holding phrase whenever i need to circle around the thought and think something out i'll just say anywho i hope you appreciate that uh brief aside it did not give me time to think as I got distracted. Ah yes, the Loki and Sylvie after a nice little touching scene, which I didn't say it last week, but I did do it in the tweet. I am a ship at art. I love this. I just love the two of them together. I, I am unashamed about it. It fills me with such joy and happiness. Anywho, they go to go deal with this uh, Leviathus. Selfie is there to try and uh, mind control it. Loki's just trying to cause a distraction, divide its attention, but it's not really enough. And he's Leviathan is just putting all of its attention onto Selfie. So it looks like all hope is lost. But then classic Loki with like his his whole thing was like really focusing on magic. Hence why he was able to trick Thanos and all that creates a giant illusion of um, Asgard to distract what's it, um, Leviathan as this big pruned reality. So it's like kind of animalistic nature, desire to feed off of things. It uh, suddenly shifts focus onto this huge place because that's what's going to give it the most uh, energy, fuel, resources, whatever it does to eat. But it being an illusion, it just starts to tear it apart and realizes what's going on. And um, the whole time, Loki and Selfie have now joined together and are doing the darndest to uh, enchant it together at the same time. But the old school classic Loki really has to, and uh, spoiler for this entire episode, I should have said, but like, especially for right now, and what really like got me to tears, not right in the moment, but later, and I'll go through it in a moment. He's just like, um, doing his best to fight it but like the thing eventually like focuses in on that old old school uh, classic loki 
and kills him. Like, just swoops over him, consumes his body whole, leaving nothing but the helmet behind, rusted and decayed. And it really just got to me. I'll go into a second, because, like, his sacrifice bought them just enough time that they needed to enchant the thing and open up the pathway to what lies beyond whoever's in charge of the TVA and these fake timekeepers, which apparently resides in an old rundown mansion. And we'll find out what's going on there next week. But like the classic Loki, what's it, um, sacrifice really got to me because like he spent his whole life. Well, the majority of his life isolated, longing for a connection and uh, just a path in life. And as soon as he reaches out for it and tries to, you know, improve, he's immediately thrown into a hellscape to wither away until like the end of time, literally at the end of time. And... Like, he fights and sacrifices himself so other people can have a future to make choices to be free from constraints that um, confine them. And like, that really resonated with me, because, like, as I say within, like, the channel descriptions and all that, like, Asperger's, I have Asperger's slash autism. It's one's a bit like of an old school diagnosis that has been phased out, but... I've gotten just at the tail end of that to be diagnosed with that, but it's pretty interchangeable on a general scale. Like, there's a certain type of autism I could be diagnosed with, but like, I've been diagnosed with Asperger's, but again, interchangeable at this stage. And it, like, when you have something like that, you really do feel constrained and trapped with. No freedom, mobility in life. No one values your your time. Always second fiddle to like everybody else, and like just seeing classic Loki sacrifice him so other people could have mobility, could make choices, could be free. It just really got to me. It. A little bit of projection, but still, it made me very emotional. It was 17 minutes. I am not cutting anything out because I had to walk again today in the hot weather. Oh, God, so tired. Anywho, it just really got to me on an emotional level, even if it's not fully justified. It's not like a direct parallel, but it's something wide enough that a lot of people can relate to, feeling trapped, not being able to make their own choices, their own decisions with their lives, wanting to break free from that and have others break free from it as well. So just seeing that sacrifice just really got me, even if it's not like specifically aimed, you know, at my experience, it's just kind of like a generalization. Like I said, a lot of people can relate to. Anywho, yeah, that's that's it. Like, I, I really love this episode. I'm super hyped for the finale. Can't wait for it. Hope to see you here next week. Anywho, again, furry VTuber, streaming on Twitch and a YouTube gaming channel, Sod's Passion Gaming. Uh, gonna get this out overnight again. Not editing out that bit. I mean, you didn't hear it, but like, I'm not editing out the time. Anywho. Friday, Control, uh, Saturday, Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King, and Sunday, getting closer to the end of Psychonauts, a little bit earlier than uh, episode, uh, the second game is coming out, so find something to briefly fill that slot in. Well, I have to finish off Super Mario uh, 64. Not looking forward to that. Rough time with the game. Anywho, that is everything, so... Cat. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time. Be sure to like, comment, share the video about the place, and to subscribe. And also, if you're feeling exceptionally generous, take a look at my Patreon. Thank you very much for your time. Ta-ta, Vida Zane. Until we meet again.